friends, if you are new here, welcome. My name is Ginny. I am a mom of a one-year-old named Alice. I'm also an elementary school teacher and a doctoral student. And today I'm actually gonna show you a way to make a baby burp cloth for $5 or less. This one specifically for me uh, cost me about $2 to make and it really will hold up very well. I've made Alice, my daughter, a ton of these and they hold up very well. So let's talk first about the things that you're going to need. First thing you're gonna need is a quarter yard of fabric of any fabric print of your choice. So I picked a fabric print here that has um, Lady from Lady and the Tramp on it, it's super cute. One quarter yard is what you're gonna need. So it's, it doesn't look like very much, but um, that's all you need. So it kinda looks like this. Quarter yard of the fabric that will be on the outside of your burp cloth. And then you'll need a quarter yard of fusible interfacing. So this is a fusible interfacing. I pick a pretty, pretty solid weight interfacing because with a burp cloth you want something that's absorbent. So um, I will put the name of that specific interfacing right over here. And since you only need a quarter yard, for me it cost me $1.67 for the interfacing. The other thing you're gonna need is a thread that is complementary to the color of your fabric. So for me, I'm gonna use a pink thread. And last but not least, you will need my pattern. My pattern is in the description box below and it is printer friendly. Make sure when you print it, you print it at 100% and also with narrow margins, but it comes with two pages. And I'm gonna show you how you use my pattern to make a uh, burp cloth. So I went ahead and I printed out my pattern and I cut out the pieces so when you Print it and cut it. There's two pages and two pieces. They look like this. And you're going to tape them together at the arrows on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and tape it together where my arrows meet to make one piece. So I'm taping up, just taking regular old tape and taping together my two pieces of my pattern. Okay, once I do that, you're gonna actually have one piece that looks like this. And so what you're gonna do with this piece is you're actually going to lay it out on your fabric and you're gonna cut it out. You need two copies of it on your fabric. So what I mean by that is if you're cutting it with a piece of fabric like this, that's folded over at the top, you only need to cut it one time because you're gonna have two copies because there's two, two sides to the fabric. Now if you have one long strip of fabric, you will need to cut it twice. That's what I mean by cut two. And then for the interfacing, you only need to cut once. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay it out and we're gonna to get to cutting. So you should have cut two of your fabric that you're going to use, or you can do one of one side and one of the other if you want to get really fancy. Me, I just cut two of the same, so I have two copies that look like this. And then I also have my interfacing, which is cut as well, which looks like this. So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to plug in your iron. I already pre-ironed this stuff, but we are going to actually go ahead and fuse the interfacing to one of the sides of our 
um, fabric. So one last thing I wanted to mention about the ironing of the interfacing is make sure you read the instructions that come with your interfacing. Every interfacing is different, asks you to use a different heat. So just make sure you read the interfacing. But basically what you're gonna do is you're going to be setting up your um, side that you want outside. So your print will be on the outside and then you're gonna have your, almost like it feels like a bumpy texture layer will be on the inside that we're going to go ahead and just iron together. So let's go ahead, plug in that iron and get to ironing. your piece interface. Like I said, I use that fleece fusible interfacing um, and I put a link in the beginning, but I'll put another link right here of which one I used. Now that it is actually fused together, we're actually going to pin our piece with the fleece interfacing or whatever interfacing you chose to the other piece, our other loose piece. So the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna actually basically make my two prints touch each other when I pin them. So when I do it, you're gonna see that I'm actually putting them together because we're gonna turn them inside out in a minute um, after we sew them, and that way we'll have the print on both sides. So we've sewn together our pieces. So you should have a piece like this. You should have a hole in it. Uh, should be about yay big or however big you feel comfortable making it personally. Um, I like mine a little bit bigger because I just have a little bit more space to actually turn it. So um, what you're gonna do first is you're actually gonna trim the excess around the outside. So I use pinking shears for this. I have my pinking shears here. You don't have to do that. You can use regular scissors if you want. I just use the pinking shears. And if you don't know what a pinking shear is, it has like, almost like zigzags on the uh, scissors. Um, helps to prevent fraying, but I promise you this thing is gonna hold up as long as you're following all the instructions because it has survived a one-year-old so far. Um, so, so after we are going to trim around the outside of this, we're actually going to start turning it inside out. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna split it um, right here and it should be outside and outside and we're gonna turn the whole thing inside out and then we are going to iron it.
right, we have turned this inside out and now we have a beautiful, mostly finished piece. It's front and back, it's the same fabric on each side. What we need to do now is we actually need to um, iron it flat. And once I do that as well, I'm gonna pin the opening. Remember that we had that opening where we were actually um, turning it inside out. And I'm gonna pin it because I wanna make sure that it stays in, in place. This is a time when I also like to double check and make sure that all of the corners are turned out really nicely. You saw in, you saw in the video that I actually used a Sharpie. You don't use anything that has a blunt edge because you can wind up uh, poking a hole through. So don't use scissors. Use something like a chopstick or a Sharpie or, or something with a blunt edge that will help you push all these out. But now I have a nice flat burp cloth that looks nice and clean. And believe it or not, when you iron it down, you'll actually, um, as long as you didn't cut away the part that's around the opening, you'll have a nice spot where you can just sew right over it. So what I usually do is I actually top stitch around the entire outside when I'm finished. So you have two options on finishing. You can either top stitch around the outside right now and be done Or I'm going to show you in just a second how you can get that quilted look. It's not very hard and if you use the um, Heat erasable pins it makes life so much easier. So I'm going to use my heat erasable pens I'm going to draw um, my lines onto this and I'm going to show you how I do that and then what I'll do is I'll I'll sew all of my lines and then I'll sew the top stitching and it will be totally finished and the top stitching kind of holds all of those um, lines in place.
Okay, so we've done either all of our um, lines or you've just done the top stitching around the outside. The last thing you actually have to do is just to iron it. The ironing is super cool because it gets rid of all of my little blue lines on here. So watch how these disappear when I iron it. And you should always get in the habit of ironing your stuff once you're done anyway, if you're making something. So I'm gonna go ahead and press everything flat. No more lines. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below and I'm happy to help you. I am just a hobbyist. I am not a professional seamstress. I just happen to enjoy sewing and I like sewing things for my daughter. So this is just a quick and dirty way to make a really solid bird cloth that's gonna last you more than one child, to be honest. The ones that we've used, we are going to use for baby number two as well, but I wanted to show you how you actually can make them on your own. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up or consider subscribing. I'm going to be doing other tutorials and most of my channel is parenting, lifestyle, education. So if that interests you, feel free to subscribe and I will see you next time. Take care.